Good morning, Boker Tov. Welcome back to our weekly Living with Emuna series in which we gather to remind ourselves of the presence of Hashem in our lives, of His dominion and providence, that He didn't just create us and move on, but He created us and He continues, sorry about that, and He continues to interact and to be part of our daily lives. I want to thank our generous Emuna sponsors of the series for the year, Drs. Avi and Bella Morgan, in memory of Rabbi Dr. Brian Galbett, and in memory of Bella's mother, Dr. Ellen Shanzer. Thank you so much for your generosity and your sponsorship this morning. Sheer is also sponsor for the Fuah Shlema, Speedy Recovery of Yisrael Ben Charlotte, wishing a complete, speedy, and painless recovery. And Le'ilu Nishmas, in memory of Rav Moshe Ben Avram, a Holocaust survivor, a case study in Emuna Pshuta. Thank you all so much for your generosity and for your sponsorship. I want to uh, take a little bit of a detour. We've been studying Ravitch Meyer Morgenstern's wonderful Sefer Biyam Derechecha, concentrating on the mead of the quality of Dveikus. And we've been talking about what it means to cling to the Almighty, what it means to stick to Him, what it means to stick with Him, and what it means to know that He's by our side. And that when a person lives life with Devek, glue, clinging and sticking to Hashem, then we have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. We have nothing to be envious over. We have no arrogance to feel because we realize our place. We're, ma- we're makir es mikomenu. We know our place in this world. So we've been learning about Dveikas, but I want to take a detour this morning. And I want to take a look also at Ravitcha Meyer Morgenstern, but not in his Sefer Biyam Derechecha and on Dveikas. I just put out a beautiful kuntras, a beautiful pamphlet on Pesach. And I want to look at a piece that he has on what he says about Pesach. Because whether you're listening to this, I know people listen later, or catching up on the series at other times. So whether you're listening later, and it's Pesach time, Shavuos time, Tisha B'Av time, Hanukkah time, the message is relevant all year round, but particularly speaks to the issue of Pesach as we are counting down and we are getting ready. Says Rabbi Shemaya the following, you don't have it in front of you, but it's a beautiful new little pamphlet, a country he's put out, called Biyam Derechecha on Pesach. And he says the following, interacts with us on Pesach, without intermediaries, without boundaries, in a way that we can understand, we recognize, we, the created, recognize the Creator. Because at the beginning, what is the core, what is foundational, what is fundamental to our service of Him, what it means to be a Jew, what it means to be alive, what it means to be an Eved Hashem, is the recognition that He exists. It's the ABCs, it's 101, you don't even get started. You cannot talk about a life of service of Hashem if you don't talk about the presence of Hashem. Yichudo is uniqueness, his distinctiveness, that Hashem is one and one and only and one of a kind. There is only one Hashem. And only after this recognition is planted firmly within us, only then can the created begin to operate. So we are the created. He is the creator. We, the created, need to know that we didn't come from nothing, that we are not immaculate conception. We didn't just come to be. We're not the random result of a big bang. But there is a bore olam. There is a creator. The creator, the Rebbe the Melech Malachi Amlochim, the King of Kings, he is here before we even understood what time is about. And he will be here eternally. He will be here forever. God is not bound by time, not by space, and not in power, not in any which way. Hashem is unlimited, and He is all-powerful. And only when we recognize that only by the goodness and the graciousness of God go we, that we are not here of our own volition, and we cannot take responsibility for our own lives or success, though we have to take our initiatives within them, only when we recognize and acknowledge and affirm our commitment to the Bore, the Creator, then the Nivra, then we the created, now we can begin to live. Now we can begin to operate. But if we don't understand, then we don't see that we have a master. If we don't know that we have someone to whom to report, that someone who has given us a blueprint and a prescription for life, someone who holds us accountable, if we don't recognize we're here for a reason, that he is in charge and he is in control, then our whole existence and our whole purpose as the Nivra, as the created, is compromised, is undermined. In creation, there are two parts. On the one hand, is the Bore. There's the Creator. There's Hashem. He is the source of everything. He is everything. The second is, There's the Creator, 
and there's the created. The creator is everything. Everything is an extension. Everything emanates. Everything is an expression and a manifestation of Hashem as the creator. He is everything. But we, the created, and we, the created, means we human beings. It also means the furniture, and it means the animals, and it means the plant, and it means everything. We, the created, Hashem gave us kochos. He gave us energy, talents, powers. He created us and He deposited us here in this world and He said, Go! Here is your mission. Here is your charge. Every blade of grass, every tree, every chair, and lahavdil, every person. Hashem built and planted within it, within us, possibility, capacity. And He said, Now go! I am the source of everything. The whole world is me, but I've invited you into my world. I've created you, and now that you are the created, go fulfill your mission. Go pursue your purpose. Go make a difference in this world. Every act, and every deed and every day, we are trying to create this connection between the Bore and the Nivra, the Creator and the Created. And a person has to have that mindfulness, that consciousness. A person has to go through life and with every act and every deed and with every pursuit to remember with clarity that I'm a Shliach, I'm a messenger, I'm an agent. And really, Hapawal Amiti, Hashem is Barach, the boss to whom I report. The one who is responsible for all of its success, the source of all, and me, is Hashem Yisbarach, is the Almighty, is the Abishter. So I live, we are meant to live with the recognition and the mindfulness regularly of the contrast of the Bore and the Nivra, of the Creator and of the Created, of our responsibility and our duty to Him, even as we enjoy and draw the pleasure of living a life of service, and even though it feels good and is meant to feel good, but to recognize that He's in charge and He's in control and we report to Him. But what happens as Ravit Shemayir? We run into a war, we run into resistance, we run into a problem. Ah, thank you, Hashem. Delicious cold drink. What happens? It draws us, Moshe Chosanu Kolazman, all the time, inevitably, invariably, we run into this proverbial wall. And the Yetzirah works in one of these ways. Resistance. Resistance. Resistance holds us back. Resistance blocks our way. Resistance manipulates and distorts our thinking. And resistance compromises and sabotages our own success. And how does resistance express itself? It can be in many, many different ways. So one of them is, it mefate, it seduces us. It fools us into thinking that we are the ones who are responsible. There we're the ones creating, we're the ones doing, we're the ones accomplishing. And it makes us think that we are independent. It makes us think that we alone are responsible. And it therefore entices us and it fools us into a place of arrogance. It creates all kinds of problems. So that voice of resistance, that voice of self-sabotage, that voice that says, I'm not so sure. Who says there's a creator? There's doubt. There's uncertainty. Maybe it's all you. Maybe you're here randomly, and whatever you're making of your life, you can take pride. It's all you. That's the voice of the Yitzhahara. Or it fools us into thinking, that there is nothing for a person to do. So the way of the Yitzhahara is very powerful. The Yitzhahara is very conniving. The Yitzhahara works in one of two ways. It either makes us believe that we're everything, or it makes us believe that we're nothing. It either tells us there is no God, there is no Him, there's only you. You should take credit, you take responsibility, you be filled with pride. It's all you. Or it works in the exact opposite direction. There's Him, so you're a garnished, you're a nothing, and therefore... You have accomplished nothing, and you can accomplish nothing, and you have no capacity to accomplish anything. So the Yetzirah convinces us, it fools us and seduces us to mistakenly thinking that either we're everything or that we're nothing. But both are equally untrue. Va'emesi, what is the truth, says Vichemeyer? Shetzarach l'shalev kol azman. A person has to think, and a person has to balance, and a person has to be contemplative. 
וזה על ידי שבכל מה שקורה עם מי, אני צריך לזכור, רשס אס הבורי יזבורך. That whatever happens to me and with me, I have to first think about Hashem. I have to first think about Hashem. What is He telling me? What is He communicating to me? What does He want me to do? How does He want me to react? How does He want me to think? What does He want me to believe? What will give Nachatz Ruach to Hashem Yisbarach? What will give Him Nachatz Ruach? It's in fact this week's parasha, Vayikra, Reach Nichoach. The karbonos that are offered, they bring God a reach nichoach, a pleasant aroma. And Rashi says, what's the pleasant aroma? That Hashem says, I see my children are doing what I've asked of them. They're giving me a nachas ruach. And therefore the nachas ruach is the most pleasant aroma there is. We mentioned the Pasha Shir earlier this week. The korban, the sacrifice, is the greatest barbecue. Who doesn't love a great barbecue? Who doesn't love the wonderful aroma produced from a great barbecue? You know who doesn't love it? Hashem, he doesn't need it, he doesn't love it. Hashem is not excited by the amazing smell of a good barbecue. He's the infinite, omnipotent one. Of course, he enjoys a good barbecue. Who doesn't? But he doesn't need the smell of the good barbecue. That's not the reach nichoch. The reach nichoch is, he says, please bring karbanos. And when we do, and when we do carefully and vigilantly and scrupulously, and when we do at a personal expense, we have to take off work and make our way to Yerushalayim. We have to buy an enormously expensive carbon. We have to... Identify the Kohen who's going to bring it on our behalf. There's an enormous amount that goes into a carbon. And when we do, and when we're willing, and when we exert the effort, and when we make the sacrifices, there's a reach nichoach. There is a pleasant aroma. And what for God is the most pleasant aroma? That we're doing His will. We don't identify with this as parents. When a child meets our needs, when a child shows they value what we care about, when a child runs to do what we want, you don't have a nachas ruach. When the child says something or does something and you go, ah, oh, nachas, that's a nachas note, that's a nachas moment. That's the greatest reach nichoach, the most pleasant aroma, the most pleasant experience that a person can imbibe, that a person can go through is the nachas from their children. And the same is true with Hashem. And that's what we're meant to contemplate. It's what we're meant to think about. It's how we're meant to approach everything in our life. Difficult decisions that we have to make. We have to say, what is the halacha? What is the halacha? What does it say in Shulchan Aruch? What do the poskim say? And if it's not clear cut, then I have to ask a shayla. I have to ask a question from an Adam Godel, from a great person. I have to seek Das Torah. What does Torah tell me? But it's more than just seeking the Das Torah by asking a Rav. We should go through life saying, does this give nachas to Hashem? What's the right thing? What's the rutz on Hashem? Will this give nachas to Hashem? Does this make Hashem happy? Does this put a smile on His face? And sometimes, even though it appears from the Shulchan Aruch, even though it appears from the, from the approach of strict halacha that something is permissible, if it doesn't give Hashem nachas, don't do it. If you ask yourself, does this put a smile or a frown on Hashem's proverbial face, then don't do it unless it puts a smile. So I need Sarach Lizkor. I always have to remember, Rashis es abore barach. The beginning, the start, but where it all begins is to remember that racious Abori Yisborach. There's Hashem. And to feel that He is the driver. He is the engine. He is the one powering whatever's happening here. I'm flying through the sky. It looks like there's an airplane with an engine and a pilot. Hashem is the one allowing it to happen. I'm driving in a car. It feels like there's a car and it's a driver. Hashem is the one who allows the car to drive. I'm breathing. I have a pulse. My legs are working. There's a bore in the world. I am investment, it's giving me a return. I planted, it's growing out of the ground. Whatever activity and whatever we're engaged in, that there is a bore. There is a creator and he is responsible. The achar kach, and only after there's a hakar, there's a recognition, only after there's an acknowledgement of the bore of the creator, now, now I can say to myself, there's a creator, what does he want me to do? I'm his shliach. He's the, he's the sender, he is the mishaleach, and I'm the shliach. He has sent me, and I am the agent. And through this perspective, So we need to have, Hashem is opposite me always. I'm about to listen, watch, speak, go, do. I have to remember there's a bore. There's a creator and he's with me and he's in this room and he's watching me and his arm is around me. And he is the one responsible for my existence. He's responsible for my success. He has expectations of me and will this meet those expectations? Does this give nachas ruach? What I'm about to choose to listen to, to watch, to say, to go, to do, is it, is it compliant? And is it something 
that Hashem wants from me. First, I remember the bore, and now I can go pursue my interest as the nivra. First, I remember the creator, and now I can go live as the created. V'zehaya mahalach b'yitzis mitzrayim. Continues with Richard Meyer, this was the mahalach, this was the perspective, the pursuit, when it came to leaving Egypt. B'tchila gila Hashem is baruch ha'zroa uzo. First, Hashem extended His outstretched mighty arm. Eshlita so v'yichudo. His rule, His dominance, His providence. She'en shem koach chutz mimenu. When Hashem took us out of Egypt and He suspended the rules of nature and He revealed Himself in unprecedented ways, He showed that He is the most powerful and there is no comparison. And the Jewish people almost didn't have to do anything. Just watch. Be spectators. Watch this. You ain't seen nothing yet. Watch what Hashem is about to do. Just watch as a spectator and marvel at the Bore revealing himself. He's a Kel Mestater. Hashem generally remains hidden. He wants us to search and to find him. That was the holiday of Purim that we just experienced and talked about. But Pesach, he doesn't encourage or invite us to go find him. He reveals himself. He says, here I am. His Yatsu, stand, uru'u, and watch Yeshua Hashem. Take in and watch the show. You ain't seen nothing yet. It's only the beginning. This is the beginning. Pesach night. I spoke last night uh, to a group about uh, Seder messages. And to me, this is the message of the Seder. We have a bank account of faith of Emunah. And there are times in the year we have to make withdrawals. There are times that we run into challenge and conflict and struggle and pain. And we're not sure where is Hashem and does He love me and why isn't He stepping in. And you know, that's a withdrawal. So our bank account of Emunah of faith better be full enough to be able to not go into overdraft. So when is the big deposit? When is there a cash influx into our bank account of faith of Emuna? It's Seder night. When we sit and we tell that story, and when we dwell on our history, and when we tell our personal narrative, then we have planted the hashrish. We are planting Emuna in ourselves, in our children and grandchildren, and everyone is assembled. So Hashem says, first, sit back and watch me, and then Hashem says, I'm going to sit back and watch you. You sit back and watch me, that's Yitzhiyah's Mitzrayim, that's Pesach. The most I'm going to ask you to do is put the blood on the door. I'm going to ask you to bring the Korban Pesach. We're going to talk about the Shabbos HaGod Lomotze Shabbos, 9 p.m. here on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and you will be notified when we go live. But you watch me in Pesach. You be a spectator. You watch the magic. But then comes Matan Torah, I'm going to give you my Torah. Says Hashem, I'm going to be a spectator. I'm going to watch the way that you live with it and what you do with it. First we begin with the Borei and then the Nivra, the Creator, then the Created. V'kachu Seder b'chol shana. B'leil ha-Seder Hashem Yisbarach mashpia aleinu. Es or ha On the Seder night, Hashem influences us with the light of Emuna. He reveals and exposes, He shines a flashlight in our face. Hakara amuka yoser b'yichud Hashem. U'mashpia l'chol Yisrael b'ava. We begin avadim ayinu. We were poor, nothing, oppressed, persecuted. And then we went free. There were ten plagues. He showed us love. He put his arm around us. He embraced us. He took care of us. He lifted us. And he made us a charge. He gave us a mission. So then begins the count where we go from the spectator and then we get our ourselves into the game. And we count. We, the Nivra, begin that avoda of looking for the Bore. And now Ravitcha Meyer moves us over to this is exactly, and stay with me, so important, so important to understand. This is exactly the idea of chametz and matzah. Chametz and matzah, we are obsessed with carbs, with gluten, with food. What is the deal, wonders Ravitcha Meyer? Mitzvah's beer, chametz, mitzvah mufla'a, shlomatzinu kamosa. The mitzvah to get rid of, to obliterate, Search and destroy chametz is unique. We have nothing like it. I'm not allowed to eat meat and milk, but I don't have to go burn it and destroy it. I'm not allowed to eat pig or pork products, but I don't have to go find them and destroy them. And I also don't find that I have a mitzvah, a food, where part of the year is permissible and part of the year is forbidden. It doesn't exist. It's either in the category of mutter, of kosher, or it's not kosher. So chametz, all year long, it's permissible. And at times, even a mitzvah to eat it, the korban toda. And then Pesach comes, and all of a sudden, it's arch enemy number one. And then it's a villain, search and destroy. All the forbidden foods, which 
are poison, they contaminate the soul, and you move on. I understand why they're forbidden. Because there is a contamination, there is a poison inherent within. And if I swallow, if I imbibe, if I absorb those non-kosher foods and tastes, then I'm absorbing that poison that spiritually will, will threaten me. So therefore I can't eat them, I have to stay away from them, they are forbidden. But chametz, what's the deal? Imura so if chametz represents the inflated ego, what is chametz? The yeast allows it to rise. If chametz represents the ego, it is inflated, it's arrogant. And chametz, every rabbi, every everybody who's studying about Pesach is reading and learning about chametz is the devil, chametz is evil, chametz is the Yitzhahara, chametz is the Sorosha Be'isa, chametz is arrogance, chametz is ego, chametz is Yitzhahara. Okay, so what about the other 51 weeks of the year? If it's so terrible that one week we search, destroy, and don't go near it, so then why is it permissible the other 51 weeks of the year? ra, and if the other 51 weeks of the year it's okay, maduahu nasar Pesach. then what is the problem with it on Pesach? What is the deal, Chametz? Chametz, are you evil? Chametz, are you okay? Who are you, Chametz? What is the deal? So listen to the insight of Ravitcher Meyer, and it will change and transform your Pesach if you're listening in time for this year or in future years. Chametz represents man's capacity to maneuver and manipulate the world. How do you produce chametz? A lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of direct intervention. To produce chametz, to produce chametz, you gotta plow, then you gotta plant, harvest, sow, winnow, thresh. Uh, separate, grind, knead. You got to add ingredients. You got to add spice. You got to add flavor. You got to allow it to rise. You got to ask the ye- add a yeast agent. And then you've created bread. Don't just think of regular bread. Think of sourdough bread. My wife makes the most amazing challah on the planet. My daughters help and also make their own incredible versions of that challah. But I say, make some sourdough. I'd love to eat sourdough. Sourdough is in. And they say, do you know what goes into sourdough? Are you crazy? Do you know how much effort and time, how many steps and stages there are to making a good sourdough? By the way, hint, after Pesach, if you want to drop off a sourdough, feel free. So sourdough, do you know what goes into sourdough? So Chametz, says Rav Shemaya, represents man's intervention, man's relationship, manipulation, working. So says Rav Meyer, such a beautiful, beautiful idea. The idea what Chametz represents, Chametz is good. The whole rest of the year, Chametz is good. How? We understand and we accept that we are God's agents, that we are empowered with the tools, that we are empowered with the talents to make a difference in this world, to maneuver, to manipulate, to control, to conquer Hashem's world, to repair and to transform His world. That's a good thing. The chametz in us, to know that we have the power to create and the power to make a difference, that's a good thing. So 51 weeks a year, we embrace it. We eat it. It's good. It's symbolism. It's message. They're powerful. They're not a problem. But what is the problem? The problem is when we start to think, you know what? I'm the one who produced the bread. It's my brilliance, my talent, my skill set. It's me. I'm the one who creates it. And we forget that we're agents of His, that we're shlichim, that we are messengers. We forget. We forget. We have violated. We've missed the point of the whole goal. The whole mission, the whole goal is to reveal the bore within the nivra to reveal the Creator within the created. Hashem is the Creator. He is invisible. He is inaccessible. How does He manifest Himself? Through the created, through who we are, through nature, and through the beautiful world, and through history, and through our good deeds. That's how the Bore is revealed, is through the Nivra. So Chametz is an example of the Bore being Megala, being, being Niglef, being revealed through the Nivra. When you eat chametz, but the chametz itself becomes the problem. When does chametz become the problem? When instead of realizing that he is being revealed through it, through us, that we are alone and there is no him. When we have arrogance and gaiva and yeshus, we think that it's ego and we are it and we are everything, that's when it's a problem. So one week a year, 
we reset and recalibrate. 51 weeks a year, chametz is good. We remember we're revealing the Bore within the Nivra. We're revealing the Creator within the created. 51 weeks a year, we remember we have the power, we have the talent, we have the capacity, and we should go use it and run with it and make a difference with it. But one week a year, we have to go back to simplicity. One week a year, we go back to the fundamentals. One week a year, we remind ourselves and we reset that in fact, there's only the Bore. Hamatzah hilechem ha'emuna. Matzah is the bread of faith. Whether literally we eat the matzah when remembering that he took us out. God showed us that there is no one, there is nothing but him. So the matzah is a prop. The matzah is a reminder. The matzah imitates and mimics what they ate when they went out. And therefore we are reminded of that experience. An experience which cannot help but engender a sense of faith of emuna. So that's the pshat. Or bein bepnimios in its deeper, deeper reason. She nahamad demehem nusa. It is the bread of amuna, lechem amuna, lechem haakara haburab mitzias Hashem is barach. When you look at a piece of matzah, you see Hashem. She raku kol koach bebriyas she zeinyan alechem she nosein es nekudas hachayim. You know what matzah represents? Flour and water mixed, and then no one manipulated them. There is no yeast, there is no rising, it's not a sourdough, there are no other ingredients, there is no spice, there is no everything, uh, uh, spices that you put on top, there is no cinnamon, there is no chocolate, there is no babka, there is no, this is not a manipulated recipe, this is the most simple. So matzah represents what God gives us, and chametz represents when man intervenes. This lechem, the most basic, the most fundamental, is what gives us life. And when we eat the matzah, we receive emuna. While eating the matzah, when thinking about and talking about and lifting and looking at the matzah, we think about emuna. And that gives us an amazing pleasure and an amazing joy. Not necessarily the taste or the consistency or what it does to our GI system, but what gives us the joy is to remember this little matzah not my amazing sourdough, not my chocolate cinnamon challah, which really should be a dessert, not a challah, which I am so proud that I see the bori within the nivra, but I made it, I baked it, I created it, I designed it. Look at a simple piece of matzah. It is the simplicity of the bore. And it therefore plants and roots itself within our thoughts and within who we are. That's what it's all about. When we look at, when we lift, when we eat the matzah, we are to think about the amuna. It is the bread of amuna. Not just the bread of amuna in the sense that it is the bread we ate when he revealed himself to us, which is the source of our amuna, but it is the bread of amuna that is the symbol. The whole way it's made and manufactured is only with the intervention of the bore without the nivra. And we go back to that one week a year. Matzah is called lechem oni. Because through it we recognize this truth. I'm a gornished. I can't do anything on my own. I can't accomplish anything by myself. Huani. I'm a poor, impoverished, indigent, pathetic, nothing. At every step, at every stage, I need his help for everything to work out. For this year to be able to go over this technology, he has to will the Wi-Fi to work. For me to breathe, for me to walk, for me to act, for my car to drive. It is all him. At every step and in every act, in every thought, I have to remember there's a Bore Olam. There is a creator. I am forever and in perpetuity dependent and reliant on the good will of Hashem. And a person who lives this Margish Kigmul Alai Imo. You can live with peace and serenity and sweetness. You live with that knowledge. You live with that confidence. You live with that comfort that there is a Bore and he's got my back. That's the Dveikas. There is a creator and he's got my back. So 51 weeks a year I eat chametz. But one week a year I have to reset. One week a year I have to go back to the simple. Not me manipulating. I'm not thinking about me as the nivra, as the agent of the bore. But I go back to just the bore and all there is is the bore. Matzah is ein od milvado. Chametz is I'm his shliach. 51 weeks a year I focus and live. I'm his shliach. One week a year I reset and recalibrate to go back and to remember that I am there. All there is is him. Ein od milvado.
אין עוד מלבדו. ולכן מתחיל ממש ביסים מסורף ומסחמץ, יוצא מהגאי ושלנו. So what's the process? First we search and destroy the חמץ. We get out of our own arrogance, we get out of our own ego, we go out of our own misconception. that we're in charge, that we're in control, that it's all us. Stop thinking that you are something. Realize, yes, on the one hand, I'm a somebody. I'm a prince, a princess, a bas melech, a ben melech. I am the progeny of the king. But realize, I only am anything because of the king. He is everything. So first I destroy the chametz. And then I can eat the matzah. In order to acquire and in order to see a recognition and an acknowledgement of the existence of Hashem. The whole week that I eat matzah, I am further engaging and endowing myself with the emunah. We gave a shir earlier this week in the afternoon call on whether there's a mitzvah to eat matzah all week long. The perspective of the Ibn Ezra, the Chizkuni, the Balamor, of the Gra, of the Pnei Yeshua, Chazan Yechezkel, that it's not just that you're allowed to eat matzah the whole week, there's a mitzvah, kiyumis. You're not obligated, but each time you do, you get matzah, mitzvah of matzah. What's the mitzvah? You are further encountering and engaging. You are further planting emuna within you. We look at and we eat that matzah and we think about the bore. All there is. Sourdough is the nivra. Matzah is the bore. I live 51 weeks realizing I'm a nivra, I'm a shliach, I'm an agent. One week a year I go back to the basics. And he goes on, but we're out of time, Rav Meyer in this beautiful kuntras on Pesach. And he talks about biur hachametz is sreifas hayeshus. Burning the chametz is burning the ego, the I. And I'll leave you with this challenge for today, which is something we've adopted in our home the last several years. When we put out the 10 pieces of bread for bedikas chametz, we try to identify each piece of bread with a quality that we want to work on, with another part of the Yetzirah, the ego, that we need to get rid of. And then when we take it to Bir Chametz and we throw it in the fire, I'm throwing my procrastination, I'm throwing in my laziness, I'm throwing in my envy, I'm throwing in my arrogance. Each of our children, each of us, we think about what do I want to work on, what is the Yetzirah that this year I'm going to find and destroy within me. That is what Chametz represents. And then I can eat the matzah of Amuna of Einod Melvado, of all there is but him, and then I can attach myself to him. Harbei Davar Tali Bikavana Sa'adam. All of this relies on our kavana. We're so busy with the shailas. Do I have to clean this? Does this have chametz? Does this need to be kosher for Pesach? And how does this work? And when is the bir chametz? And what exactly is the last time? And they're all very, very, very important. Not minimizing them in the least. However, we have to remember the pnimius, the depth, the kavana, the intent, we have to grow through the experience. It's supposed to be something that's meant to be able to transform us. Wishing everyone a wonderful day. Join us tonight behind the bima with Shruli Besser, the prolific author. Just came out with the Haggadah of the Chassam Sofer and looking very much forward to enjoying bringing him on 9 p.m. behind the bima tonight. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay holy.